Davis steps under center. Gibson and McClendon behind it. Davis with motion by Richard. Will get the ball to McClendon. He leaps. Oh, he doesn't get in. He fumbled the football. Carolina holds. The game is over. And Carolina has won the game. Ben lead to throw. Over the middle. Intercepted. Wolfuck again. Wolfuck the other way. At the 30. The 40. Wolfuck to midfield. Miles Wolfuck with the pick. The heels on the doorstep of an enormous victory. Left side of the line. Hood standing to Williams' is right. Williams going to throw. One-on-one. Davis has it. Touchdown. Carolina wins. Carolina is the Coastal Division champion. Bernard fields it at the 26. Heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio is going to take it. for the possible win. Snap, spot, kick away, high enough, long enough. It's good! It's good! Carolina has won the game on a 42-yard field goal by freshman Hunter Burr. Good gosh, dirty. This is the Heel Tough Blog Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. It's Anthony Pagnotta, your host as always, and today is the start of our Tar Heel off-season interview series. You guys may remember that we had this last year. We called it the quarantine interview series because a lot of those interviews were done during quarantine, uh, you know, when COVID first started. So uh, we thought that was a creative way to be able to talk to some former Tar Heels, give some guys some things to do. And we're bringing it back this year. It's the off-season, a uh, little bit of downtime here. Of course, we are going to have plenty of stuff going on on the recruiting trail here uh, with June rolling around, the dead period. Period ending. So we are going to have you covered on all of those fronts, but we did want to talk to some former Tar Heels because we had so much fun doing that last year. We talked to so many great guys, and this year we're not going to hit on those same guys again. We're going to circle back around, find some guys that we didn't talk to last year that we didn't get to, and we will talk to them this year. And so we started off the first guy that we talked to, a guy from Mac Brown's first tenure in Chapel Hill, and a guy that finished up uh, his career under. Mac Brown in his first two seasons on campus, uh, as well as a guy that played the last two years under Dick Crum's tenure. Uh, a guy on the offensive line, one of only four, uh, or excuse me, one of only five Tar Heels to be a three-time first-team All-ACC representative in his time on campus at Carolina. We are talking about former Tar Heel offensive lineman Pat Crowley. He stopped by with us earlier today. And the first thing that we had to ask Pat is, how did a guy from Hampton Bays, New York, which is on Long Island all the way out east, get to Chapel Hill, North Carolina? It's kind of a crazy story. Um, You know, you're from Long Island, so if you're from Long Island, you can... Um, understand, you know, there's Long Island's a lot bigger than most people realize. I, I grew up out east, yeah. so not only was I from New York and Long Island, where football isn't like down in the south, um, it was a small high school, equivalent of what would be a one A 1A school um, down here, and um, Hampton Bay's high school. I mean, we had we had a hundred kids in each grade, and uh, you know, just lucked out. We had a good group of kids in my in my grade. Um, and I think, you know, looking back at it, we had seven kids went on to play college football. Now, you know, I, I was basically the only D1 guy, but, you know, they, 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 they were good players. You know, we played together, we grew up together, we played together. It was a lot of fun. My, my high school coach, Mike Tavares, was a huge influence. Um, you know, he did a great job. Back then it was before the – Online, the star system, you know, these, all the different tryout camps and everything like that. He basically filled out a bunch of uh, questionnaires and made some copies of some film and sent it out to about 30, 30 colleges. And, and, uh, you know, some of them were interested. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of how it all happened. And, uh, um, and ended up visiting my, my three final visits, uh, official visits were Carolina, 
and then went to Duke, and then I went to Wake Forest uh, three weekends in a row back in 19, January 1985 and, uh, and, and chose Carolina. So, you know, it was really interesting that, that it worked out. It was three North Carolina teams, but, you know, they're all good academically, and, you know, I just felt Carolina was the right fit. So your first two years you spent under Dick Crum, and then, you know, you get, end up getting replaced by this young hotshot named Mac Brown. This isn't Mac Brown that we're talking about now. This is a younger Mac Brown who, you know, was a head coach for one year at App State, uh, went and, and, and was an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, and then circled around to coach three years at Tulane. So what were your first impressions, do you remember, uh, when Mac Brown arrived to campus in, in Chapel Hill? Was, was it, you know, everybody was pretty excited? Or were they like, wow, look at this new guy. This is definitely a step up for him. What was that kind of like? It was interesting. Um, you know, if you go back and take a look at our team, that um, the last team under Coach Crum, we were pretty good. I mean, we had a couple of teams there. When you go back and look at how we, how we, you know, I mean, we lost a couple of close games. We played some really tough teams. I mean, we played – Auburn and Oklahoma were both ranked, in, you know, I think Oklahoma was number one in the country. Auburn was top ten. You know, we, we had some dogfights with some some ACC teams, and, um, you know, we're playing Clemson for essentially the ACC championship. And, uh, you know, it's I think the score was, you know, we're losing 10-7 to 7 in the fourth quarter. And we have a guy open and, you know, could have been a touchdown and a win. So, you know, what it could have, should have, it didn't happen. And we ended up, you know, that year – uh, fading at the end, and 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 uh, and Coach Crum got replaced. So here comes, like you said, young guy, right? Coach Brown. I, I was doing the math. He sent me a picture. He texted me a picture the other day. It was a picture of the two of us on the cover of one of the the um, his first. I think might have been his very first. Um, back they they used to publish the the the, the, the Tar Heel. Uh, what was it called? It was it was uh, the sports paper, and it was me and him on the cover, and um, both of us looked a lot, a lot younger <laughs> and a lot skinnier too. But um, he he uh, you know he comes to town, and you know the one thing about Coach Brown is that you know he he is such a big picture guy. You know, I mean, he he did have a, you know a, a, the reputation of of having an offensive mind and. Um, you know, and wanted to open things up, but you know, he definitely was a big picture guy, and you know, you could tell that um, he he he's very very observant of what went wrong with the previous coaching staff, and and how he was going to apply his philosophy to what we were doing, but he also was smart enough to realize, look, you know, a lot of the folks weren't crazy about Coach Crum because. You know, he just was a quiet guy. You know, he, he you know, he, they wanted somebody that was more outgoing. And while they got Coach Brown, that's perfect. You know, and they, they, they wanted to recruit better in, in the state of North Carolina. Well, Coach Brown tells his, his coaches, go out there and meet every single high school coach in the state of North Carolina in the first 30 days, and they did. And and just like this go around, you know, they they own the recruiting in North Carolina. Even started beating out Clemson and you know, the other surrounding Tennessee, you know, for kids that were, were, were top quality. You know, they wanted to have a little more exciting offense, you know, and, and, and so eventually we got there, you know. But, um, you know, so, so he saw that. And, and, and the other thing was is that, you know, better relationship with the, with the alumni and, and the lettermen, you know. Some of the lettermen under Coach Crum, you know, Coach Crum was focused on winning now. And, you know, Coach Brown was, was all about bringing – you know, former players back and reconnecting, and you know, having having that, those relationships. So, so you saw that he had a, he had a, he had a plan in place, and he was very much a big picture guy. Um, and and you knew, you knew that, you know, things were going to change a lot, and then they did. And eventually, you know, we got the wins turned around, and then then it was awesome. You know, he had all the other good stuff going on. Plus, he's winning, and and the, the program. Um, you know, it was never better, and and then unfortunately, you know, we lost him. But he's back, you know, and he's doing a great job. So um, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, you know, those those last two years, as you mentioned, they weren't the greatest under Mac Brown, but. 
you know, do you remember the mindset being one of, of positivity and what you talked about there of, of you know, the, the long game instead of the short game with results? Because, you know, in, in today's college football, we've talked about it multiple times here on the podcast. We don't know if, if a guy like Matt Brown probably would have survived with the demand for win now with the first two seasons that he had. Was it different back then, though? Uh, you know, a great question. And um, it, it definitely, you know, he – they had more patience back then. Not a lot, but, you know, they had more patience than they have today. Um, you know, the financial strain that, that, that is put on a football program to, to win and get people in the seats and, and, and everything um, is just uh, incredible today. You know, so back then they had a little more. But I think Coach created – Coach Brown created that patience because, you know, he, he was he was really good at, at, at you know, getting people to buy into his vision. Um, you know, even us who were on a team that, you know, we were 1-10, in 1-10, in and it was brutal. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, if you ask him how were those years, he would tell you they were brutal, and they were brutal. You know, it was tough. I mean, it's tough that, you know, we were the ones that had to go through that. Um, but, you know, that's life. That That's, you know, you, you know you're – you know, you're uh, you're never a failure unless you quit, right? You know, and and so you know, I knew that you know I wasn't raised that way. You know, I was raised to you know put your head put your head down, and keep working. You know, grind, 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 grind. You know, and and never ever bail out on your on your on your you know your teammates or your friends. And and I, you know I didn't do that. And and we we hung in there. You know, um, and and then. That next year, and I, I came back and I coached, you know, for a couple of years, and I saw the, the turning point, and it was awesome. It was great. You know, I was so happy for, for the program and for those guys. And, and um, you know, but it was tough. It was, it was, it was really tough. And Coach Brown, now, you know, it's funny. Is my son is, is on the team, and, and he talks to me about some of the things that Coach Brown says after every practice. And, and I said, well, let me tell you probably what he's telling you. And it's the same stuff that he was saying 35 years ago. You know, it's 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 about, um, you know, doing the right thing. It's about staying positive. It's, it's about, um, you know, being, being a leader on and off the field. It's all the, it's all the things that he spoke about back then, you know, and, and those things don't change. And there are a lot of things that I picked up as a coach. So, so you know, that we – I. I knew that if they gave him time, he'd be successful, and fortunately they did. Well, you know, he did have a really good player on his offensive line those final two years, and you you were one of just five Tar Heels in program history to earn first-team All-ACC honors three times in your career, joining guys like Kelvin Bryant, William Fuller, Greg Ellis, and Ray Bly. How special is it for you to be mentioned in the same category with historic players like that? I mean, it's, it's an honor. It, you know, it's 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 uh, you know something that um, I look back on and I'm proud of, without a doubt. Um, you know, I, I, I give it, I give all three of those for an ACC championship ring. You know, um, in a heartbeat. You know, and and but but you know, I, I worked hard. Um, I had no idea what I was getting into. You know, coming from that small school in New York, I'd never been to a college football game. Um, you know, as you know, I grew up in New York, and you're younger than me. But back then, even more so, it was, it was all about pro sports. You know, yeah. and and kind of out of the blue. I, you know, I had my parents weren't real big, and you know, I I, I didn't have you know the pedigree of, of of being a having other relatives that went on. You know, did, did a lot of college sports, so it was kind of I remember, all of it was kind of new. So I came down to Carolina. And the guy who recruited me left, um, you know, a guy named John Matsko, who actually I still have a relationship with today. He's the the offensive line coach up with the um, Washington uh, pro football team. And, um, you know, and and we we stay in touch. We'll we'll text, you know, two or three times a year, just touch base and everything. Um, But uh, he left. And so I have a new guy, you know, that's the offensive line coach named Bill Stewart. And, you know, Coach Stu was a psycho. I mean, he was, he was, he was crazy, you know, in a good way, you know, but, he, you know, an offensive line coach is typically are, the good ones are like that, you know, and, and he was the reason that I, I was a good player because he was able to, you know, turn me into, you know, an offensive lineman, college offensive lineman. And 
I, I, I responded well to the, his coaching techniques, you know, I mean, he pushed, push, 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 push. And, 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 you know, and it was either, either you're going to fold or you're going to, you know, hang in there and get better. So, you know, I had the right coach at the right time, um, you know, and, and then, you know, then when coach Brown came in, coach Stu left, but, um, you know, I had the privilege of playing for him for, for three years, you know, I was redshirt one year and played for two years and then, and then, uh, and then, and then Coach Brown came in, but you know he he, he gave me the, the that 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 coach and that ability to to play. So it's I was not like I was you know a five star. Like if I came in today, I would have been a, a one or two star. You know, like who's this guy? But yeah, you know, I worked hard and and um, you know, like I said, I was in the right place at the right time. So you end up becoming the head coach in 2015 of R.J. Reynolds High School here in the state of North Carolina. You know, what mm-hmm. went into being able to, to get that job? Because at the time you were in investment banking, you had kind of, you know, turned your focus a little bit from football. What made you want to get back into football heavily and become a head coach? So, you know, I've been working as a financial advisor since I got out of um, coaching at Carolina back in 1992. And, you know, the initial phases of that, you know, it's a pretty big ramp up and you don't have time to do anything. Um, and we, you know, we got married and we, we had kids a little bit later. And then, you know, then, then when the kids started growing up, I started coaching them and different things. And, um, my oldest son, uh, Will, you know, he, I coached him t- tackle football in middle school and the job opened up at RJ Reynolds and when he was going to be a ninth grader and a good buddy of mine is the assistant. I'm not the assistant is the DA district attorney for, for, uh, for Forsyth County here. And he's a lacrosse coach. He played, he played lacrosse at Duke. And, um, so we're looking at schools and you know, school choice, it's kind of crazy, but school choice here in Winston-Salem. And, uh, you know, we're looking at R.J. Reynolds. It's our neighborhood school and talking to Jim O'Neill, you know, the the uh, the D.A. And, and he said, oh, yeah, you need to come here. We got a great, great, you know, great. It's great academically. We've got, you know, the, the cross is solid. Basketball is great. Sport, two of the sports that we'll play. And he said, in football, you know, I think we're getting ready to have a coaching change. And sure enough, they, they got a coaching change. He calls me up two days later and says, look, you need to get this job. And I said, you're crazy. You know, I, I've i got four kids. You know, I, I've got a job. <laughs> so it, it just worked out that, you know, the, 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 they go to school, you know, it's almost 4 o'clock. So, you know, I, I'm able to, uh, you know, I cut back on other volunteer things. And so this is, this is my – it's kind of like my mission to work with these kids to try to help them get better, try to, you know, try to give them opportunity. You know, some of the, a lot of the kids come from tough situations and, you know, um, and football is a tool is to come to it to try to get them to be able to go from, you know, grow from be you know, boys to men and, um, you know, to be successful, get a chance to either go to college or, you know, or, or learn a trade or get into the military, you know, and, and, and have a plan. And, and so that's what I've been doing. So I, I was able to coach Will, my first four years, you know, son, and uh, you know, I keep doing it. It's we're we're kind of we're in the middle of a, a a lot of good football teams around here. You know, um, Mount Tabor High School right down the street from us, they won the state championship. East Forsyth won it last year. Um, West Forsyth is perennial, perennial a top five team in, in, in the state. So a lot of competition. You know, we're trying to build the program here and. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, we'll get to that point um, and have have consistent success, you know, um, and uh, on top of helping the kids mature and, and be successful in life. Well, talking to a lot of the, uh, the coaches around the state of North Carolina when, when it comes to, you know, the high school landscape and everything like that, one of the big things that a lot of people have said is that there is just a huge difference between Matt Brown and, and, and what they saw under Larry Fedora when it comes to in-state recruiting. You know, being a, a coach and, of course, knowing Coach Brown, you know, what is the biggest difference that you've noticed? Because uh, I'm assuming that Coach Brown has, has stopped by and visited a couple of times, been on the phone with you a couple of times as well. What, what's that biggest difference that you've noticed? Well, you know, Coach Brown, like, again, it goes to you, you have to have a big picture. You know, you have to have a plan, right? And Coach Brown, he's taken what he learned his first couple go-rounds at North Carolina, at Texas, 
you know, at uh, Tulane and, and App, you know, the first go around. And then, then, then he got out of coaching, right? And he was working for ESPN. But I think what a lot of people underestimate is, is that Coach Brown did not leave Texas on the terms that he wanted to leave, you know. Um, you know, he, he, was, he was kind of a victim of his own success, right? You know, you go down there, you build a program up, you win a national championship, and they expect you to win one, you know, every other year. Um, you know, right now, Saban can do no wrong, right? Coach Saban can do no wrong. But if he if he went four or five years without winning a national championship, they'll be saying it's time to get rid of him. You know, I mean, it's, it's, that's that's kind of what happens. So, um, when, you know, Coach Brown, even though you know he's 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 not on the uh, younger side of of his career, you know, he is so motivated. I think by you know by by by, by by showing people that, hey, look, this is the right way of doing it, you know, and I can, you know, I can take what I've learned at these other places and from other programs and bring it back to North Carolina, and we can win a national championship in North Carolina. We can win a national championship in Carolina with having high standards. And, um, you know, he's, 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 he's great about that. But in order to do that, you, you, you know, you got to get the players, right, and, and you got to recruit. And it starts at home. I just read this um, – after you know how many kid, how many kids came in the draft came from what states you know what what state they went to high school you know what high schools you know and and North Carolina was top ten you know you have you have Texas and Florida California Georgia but but North Carolina is in the top ten of the you know amount of kids that come out that that end up getting drafted out of high schools so you know if it just goes to show if if you could own North Carolina. Right, and that's your home state, and it makes sense, you know. I mean, Coach Brown, you know his his his, you know, what he tells the kids is, look, this is this is not a four year decision; it's a forty year decision. You know, if you come into North Carolina, all right, it's gonna it's it's gonna help you with the rest of your life during football, during college, and afterwards. And he's right; it did it for me. I moved to Charlotte, and I knew nobody, but you know, people knew me, and it helped me with business connections. You know, and then I moved to Winston Salem. Same thing. You know, and it just opens doors for you, and 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 that that will happen to all these kids that go there. Why go to Clemson? Go to North Carolina and create your own legacy. You know, why be why, why be the next guy that you know is is in the in the Clemson program? They do a great job down there, but stay in state and 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 build you know build your own legacy uh, of winning a national championship. So you know he's he he, he pushes his coaches. You know, but but he loves them. You know, same with the players. And you know, he pushes them, and he expects he expects nothing but you know the 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 best effort. All right, this question we'll ask you. One of those guys that's being pushed by him right now is your son, Will. As you mentioned, you got the chance to coach him for four years. He ends up walking on at Carolina. You know, what was that like when he told you that he wanted to walk on at Carolina and, and, and play under Coach Matt Brown? What, what do you remember about that? He's great. Uh, you know, number one, you know, uh, he, he was – he he was really academically, you know, like he worked really hard academically. And um, he got into and, – and early on, you know, as a coach, I, I kind of understand how the recruiting process works, you know. And and I told him, I said, I said, Will, you know, you're – you know, he's, he's, he's six foot he, – and coming out of high school, he's six foot 225. And, and you know, I said, I said, look, you're not tall enough for your speed. And you're not fast enough for your size, okay? You know, so it was like, and, and I said you could go to a Division two or Division three school, and and play either side of the ball and and have a great career, you know, um, or you can go to a big school and and walk on. You know, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to get a scholarship. And um, you know, so he he applied to Carolina, he applied to Georgia and NC State and um South Carolina, you know, and 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 he got into every school he, he he applied to. So, he did that on his own. And then um you know, then cuz he told me, he said he said that I I I want to go to a big school. Okay. Um 
so we had, you know, we had talked to App about him being a walk on there, and we had talked to a couple other places about walk on, and and that's when the whole coaching change happened. And Coach Brown came in, and um, so I called up uh, Rick Steinbacher, who you know I knew it was a transition time, and Coach Brown was real busy, and I said, um, you know, Rick, do me a favor, and you know have. You know, Coach Brown and the coaches take a look at at Will's film and see if he'd be, you know, uh, you know, worthy of 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 a walk of walk on spot. And um, and Coach Brown got back to us. You know, Coach Brown set it up. He came to the school. He and Coach Longo and they met Will, met me, and um, and they brought him up for a visit and and they offered him a preferred walk on spot. And um, and 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 Will loved it. You know, I mean, it was it was it's. It's been it's been great, you know, and and Coach Brown um, has treated him, you know, he, he treats he treats the kids all equally. You know, it's um, if you're a walk on up there or if you're a scholarship guy, it's hard to tell the you know, difference. And um, you know, but I told Will, I said, look, I said it's harder being a walk on, okay. And it, it, you know, I was a scholarship guy, and I told him, I said, look, I've got buddies that were scholarship guys that never saw the field. And it's not because they were terrible players. It's just, you know, sometimes you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, you might be behind a guy that's just a stud. Um, you know, you, you know, everybody, that, there's no injuries. There's, no, there's just, you know, it just doesn't work out. And I said, you know, as, as, a, non, as, as a non-scholarship guy, even harder, you know, um, because they, they, they don't look at you right away. And, and so he's been, he's been great on scout team for the past two years. Um, you know, and he's, he, he takes it real seriously. Um, you know, he, they love, they love his effort. You know, I've, I've had comments from Longo, comments from coach Bateman and coach Brown. And so he's just trying to crack into the travel team now, you know, that's, that's the next step is that, you know, either through hopefully, um, you know, a, 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 a special teams, you know, opportunity, or maybe, uh, you know, one of the personnel groups where he can be that you know, blocking back, you know, something like that. And, so, so he's, you know, he's, he's, he got into um, Keenan Flagler School of Business, which was a whole lot better than his old man was able to do, you know. And, um, you know, he's, he's got a 3.6, 3.7 GPA. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's doing great. He's got a bunch of good friends on the team. And, um, you know, and Coach Brown is, I said, I said Will, you, you got on here at the absolutely perfect time because Coach Brown – is going to win a state, uh, win a, 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 a national championship, you know, and and you'll be part of that. Whether you get on the field or not is something that you know you'll be part of. So he's he loves it. He's, he's real excited. Well, that's awesome to hear, man. Great to hear uh, they got into uh, the business school up there as well. Um, and yeah, congratulations to you guys. Uh, it's definitely an exciting time in Chapel Hill, and uh, glad that you were able to talk to us uh, about some of those uh, times that maybe weren't as exciting, but uh, led to some of those exciting times in Chapel Hill. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for stopping by with us, man. This is awesome. We always love talking to the former players. You're the guy that bats lead off for us, and uh, I got to say, it's going to be tough for some of these other guys to follow up. I think uh, you are definitely uh, one of those, one of the best interviews that we've had on the show for sure. Well, I, I appreciate it. And, and I, I do want to reiterate that, you know, um, I wouldn't do it any different way. Okay. Even knowing it's one in 10, one in 10, the last two years there. Um, I truly believe that what we did there did help coach Brown, you know, lay the groundwork for, for sure. um, you know, for future success. But, you know, it's, it's, things happen for a reason, you know, and I, I met my best friends, you know, I was able to do a lot of different things that, you know, I would never be able to do. So, you know, yeah, it's kind of tough. You hate being part of a team that doesn't, you know, win championships and stuff like that. You know, you, all things being equal, you'd love to win those championships, but Hey man, that's life. You know, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not what happens. It's how you react to it. It's how you respond to it. I tell my players that all the time. Okay. And that, that sets you up for being able to deal with, um, you know, adversity later in life. Okay. You know, if you can't deal with a loss, how are you going to be able to deal with things in your family when things don't go the right way or at your job when things don't go the right way? You know, this sets you up for dealing with things so that, you you know, you can be successful later on in life. So, 
no regrets whatsoever. You know, it was, it was, you know, I, I, you know, Coach Brown. I tell people this. They, they ask me, if, you know, how about? I said, look, it, it, it was, it was a tough two years there. Okay, you know, we had to do what we had to do. It was the turnaround time, you know, and we were right in the middle of it. But you know, I tell people, I said, this is, this is the special part about Coach Brown. You know, is that Coach Brown did more for me, you know, after I played at Carolina than he did for me in the two years I played for him there. You know, every time I needed to have somebody write a letter of recommendation, he's the first guy I turned to. You know, I stayed in touch with him the whole time, and he was always there, you know. Um, and he's just great. You know, he's just a great guy. That I, The only thing that I regret for Will, okay, and I hope Coach Brown lives to 100, but, you know, I got him when he came in at age 33, Right, and and I was twenty, I was twenty one. He was thirty three or thirty five, whatever it was. But our age difference, he's getting ready to turn seventy. I'm getting ready to turn fifty four. So we were sixteen years apart. So when he came in, I was twenty one, and and he was or twenty, and he was thirty six. Right? I mean, that's that's a young guy, you know. And so Will's playing for the seventy year old version or sixty nine year old version of Coach Brown. You know. Uh, you know, hopefully he lives to 100, right? But, you know, I've had him for this whole time as somebody who's been a mentor, somebody that's been able to, you know, make, 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 make write letters for me and, and, and do all those kind of things. And he's, he's influenced so many people and, and been, been a mentor for so many people. He's just a great guy. Well, he's still got the moves of that 36-year-old Mac Brown whenever it comes to <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, hey, the more dancing, the better. That's right. I love Coach Brown. He's been he's been just a wonderful person for me and my family, and and um, you know we're just one of you know hundreds or thousands of people that he's affected in such a positive way. So you know, um, continue to watch success and. Look forward to a great year this year. All right. Yeah, we do as well. Great stuff, Pat. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, hopefully we'll talk to you down the line. Best of luck uh, over there at Reynolds High School. We'll be cheering you on. I think all Tar Heel fans will be cheering on Reynolds High School to have plenty of success in the upcoming fall season uh, in 2021. So thanks for joining us, man. Uh, take care, uh, you and the family, and uh, we'll talk to you sometime down the line. All right, man? Sounds great. All right. Thank you. And so we want to thank Pat for stopping by with us. A really great conversation with him. Uh, One of the better ones that we've had for sure on here. Uh, You know, guy that... You know, uh, we, you never really know what you're going to get to going into these interviews, but he really just poured about everything that he could out for us. So we really appreciate him stopping by. Some great stuff uh, from him. If you want to check out, uh, you know, his high school, check out, uh, you know, where you can go and watch them play coming up. This coming year, you could go on to uh, maxpreps.com, search R.J. Reynolds High School. Uh, it's in Winston-Salem, as he mentioned, and you guys can check that out. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm hoping maybe I'll be able to get it back on the recruiting trail this year a little bit more in person than uh, you know I did this past year, of course, with everything. Uh, a lot of the COVID protocols still set in place. I uh, used uh, more uh, of the NFHS network than I have in a very, very long time to be able to get looks at some of these guys, but Maybe one of those trips, uh, when we look at some of these guys, will be up to Reynolds High School to uh, you know meet Coach uh, Crowley in person. Uh, just you know, a great conversation as we mentioned with him, and this is one of. Uh, many that are coming up. We got some really great ones that are scheduled uh, down the line here. We've got uh, another former Tar Heel offensive lineman who's going to be with us tomorrow. Bill Spann is going to stop by with us, uh, as well as uh, a couple other guys uh, in the defensive backfield uh, over the last uh, decade. You know, over the last decade uh, to two decades at, at Carolina, uh, we're going to have uh, Errol Hood on this weekend along with Kendrick Burney. So we've got a bunch of great guys that are going to be coming on. Those will be uh, staggered just a little bit coming out. We're not going to put one out every day, but we are going to make them pretty frequent because we are going to try to get a good amount of guys on here. Really nail that down before we start touring. Uh, probably in early July, uh, maybe mid-July, 
July at the latest uh, to focusing on the upcoming season. Uh, of course, we are going to have uh, you know plenty of guys that are going to be coming on uh, as well from the national publications that'll be stopping by with us. Uh, we're going to get back into that this year. Last year uh, it was a little bit tough. You know, we had Brett Ciencia come on uh, to talk a little bit about the Tar Heel schedule once it got released. Um, this year, you know, we are going to get back to having our normal group, or at that, or that's at least the plan of you know Stephen Lassen from Athlon Sports. Uh, you know, they have uh, you know Carolina ranked really, really high in their preseason rankings. They actually talked to Sam Howell. Uh, that is one of the main features in their Athlon Sports College football preview for this year. So we hope to get him on. We're going to talk to Bill Bender, of course, of the Sporting News. No doubt we'll be able to get him on. Friend of the show. We've talked to him multiple times. So he'll, of course, be able to stop by with us. And then we're hoping to get Phil Steele back on after a year off with him. We were going to reach out to Phil last year. uh, And it was right about the time when Carolina announced that they were not going to play their regular schedule. They were going to switch play an all-conference schedule. Uh, So we kind of adjusted there. We knew that Phil... Uh, you know, put so much into the college football Bible uh, that he writes and, uh, you know, puts out every single year. So we figured that uh, with everything that he would have to do to scramble to redo some of the stuff, we would wait, hold off, uh, and it just got a little bit too late. So this year, we are hoping to get him back. We'll have all those guys, along with Brett Ciencia of Pick Six, Pick Six Previews, who will be back with us as well. Uh, so make sure that you guys uh, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you don't want to miss any of those great episodes of the podcast. That's what the subscribe feature is for. Make sure that you guys are subscribed wherever you listen to your podcast because that's going to allow you to you know find out when these great editions of the podcast come out. It'll be right in your podcast library so you can listen to it right there and then because as we mentioned, we've got so much great content coming up. Tons of guests. We'll be back to analyze the season, one that's going to be extremely exciting, and it just keeps growing more and more exciting as we get closer. On the day that we're recording this, we are exactly 100 days away from the opening kickoff of Carolina Football 2021 on the road against Virginia Tech. So uh, it's going to be a great year. We're going to have you covered on all fronts. So make sure that you uh, are locked in on the podcast. Also, uh, make sure you're going to the website, HeelToughBlog.com. Of course, you can check out the podcast there. Same thing with the Four Corners podcast, which is the basketball podcast uh, for the Heel Tough Blog. There are tabs up at the top where you guys can click on those. You can listen to them on the website if that's the way you want to go uh, with that as well. And uh, you can read all of the articles that we have on there. As I mentioned, entering a huge month of June coming up. There's great articles up there getting you guys ready for that. We have a recruiting trail update, which sort of tells you uh, some of the guys that are going to be on campus. We are going to go back and update that one. Uh, but we're also going to probably write an article right before uh, this, you know, the, the turn of the calendar to June to sort of lay out, you know, where Carolina is standing with some of these guys um, on the recruiting trail as they head into the month of June and and, and head into some of the visits that they're going to take to campus. There's a long list of guys that are stopping by Carolina. A lot of them are going to be official visits, so we'll sort of tell you you know where uh, you know Carolina stands with all those guys as we get closer to June 1st. That'll all be on the Heel Tough Blog website, Heel Tough Blog. Dot com and then we haven't figured out just what we're doing yet usually we wait until uh you know around this time to figure out what we're going to do for the off season series I don't think it's going to be as in depth as as it was a year ago. Of course, you know, a year ago we picked you know one that was extremely in depth because we had plenty of times on our, time on our hands. This year, a little bit different with me. You know, when I'm working on the radio station uh, here in Charlotte, it, it is a little bit of a more compact schedule, so uh, I am going to have to sort of work around that a little bit. So it may not be quite as in depth the off season series that we do this year uh, in terms of the articles, but uh, we'll figure something out. We'll get it up there for you uh, here as we go throughout the summer months and head towards uh, what will then be plenty of coverage once the team gets back into fall camp and as they head towards that September 3rd kick 
against Virginia Tech. So make sure that you guys are checking all that out. And you can check out all the articles, all the podcasts, all the video versions of the podcast. We are going to bring those back this year. We did get uh, the studio rights back uh, to the studio that we were using beforehand. So uh, there's going to be uh, you know some live shows that we're going to be doing, uh, previewing the season. There's going to be some stuff. And we'll, of course, once we get into game weeks uh, that we're going to be doing. So uh, there's a lot of great stuff that's coming your way. Make sure that you guys can see it all on the social media feeds. Facebook is the best place to check it out. Uh, just search Heel Tough Blog on Facebook. Like and follow the Facebook page. And then you can go over to the Twitter page as well. Heel Tough Blog on Twitter. That's the at. And then uh, for me, uh, at HTB Anthony, for Josh, uh, who is the normal co host, at uh, HTB Josh. And then if you want to follow Zach Hubbard uh, on social media, you can follow him as well. He's our recruiting guy. He uh, you know, posts a little bit about Carolina recruiting, a little bit about Alabama recruiting on there as well. Um, but really is a guy that has done a really good job uh, with the recruiting stuff here on the podcast. He's at Hack Zubbard. Two on Twitter. So that wraps it up for this edition of the podcast. I want to thank Pat Crowley for stopping by with us. I want to thank you guys for listening. And as always, go Tar Heels!